meeting tonight I'd just like to, to say that this, this is being recorded so if anybody doesn't wish to be recorded then they have the right to leave this meeting now but please do not um, start talking amongst yourselves because this is, this is a council meeting. Thank you. <coughs> So they have removed the sports hall. 
The environment agency requires a 12 metre flood protection buffer which extends about halfway across the road. So when maximising the space, buildings cannot be placed closer to the bits than that. They say that will consequently benefit us from the wider promenade. But in reality, the 11 metre promenade is enclosed between the edge of the sea wall and three to four storey buildings, obliterating the vistas facing inland. Are we really content to tolerate a massive road literally overshadowing the canal, six metres higher and 20 metres from it, and infringing on the environmental agency's desired 25 metre wildlife protection zone? The development runs roughshod over at least 11 clauses of the national policy framework, some of which, such as flood risk, preclude this development, since there is an alternative site. Additionally, 37 test locations exceed the 1.5% carbon dioxide safety limit for building residences to be within 50 metres. The latest outlandish claim is that Prince of is financially viable while Nicholas Quarry is not any slower. However, Shetley are unwilling to expose their financial calculations, which dramatically underestimate the complexity and timescale for Princess Parade. Their figures are seriously at odds with the financial appraisals of our qualified valuers who show conclusively that Princess Parade will lose multi millions. If Shetley persists with Princess Parade, the engineering and financial risks make it highly unlikely that a legislature will ever be built. The ridiculous claim that the cost of Nichols Quarry is 15.8 million demonstrates the lack of understanding of the Section 106 agreement. The construction work on Nichols Quarry will be simpler, quicker and much cheaper because it does not suffer the complexities of Princess Parade. Currently, the developer has no incentive to get the site ready, as Shetway has shown no wish to build there. However, if they take up the option, the developer has to make the site oven ready for building before the 250th residence is completed. We all want a new leisure centre, but this can only be guaranteed on Nichols Quarry. <coughs> so why are Shetway so determined to forge ahead with Princess Parade against all logic? Thank you. I'm Brian Morgan, and I'm speaking on behalf of Save Princess Bray. Whilst the Local Government Act enables commercially sensitive information to be confidential, it has to be in the public interest to withhold it. The Council has previously made financial viability information, such as the Savills report on Princess Parade, publicly available. So why are they withholding all the financial information this time? In the Council's agent's letter, it doesn't state that the overall scheme is viable, and it doesn't state whether the finances enable the 45 affordable homes, hopefully local for local people, to be provided. It does give a cost of 2.1 million to the council of providing the leisure centre on Princess Parade. This is clearly not the construction cost, unless it's a shoebox. The figures for Nichols Quarry and Princess Parade are presented in such a way as to obscure rather than to clarify, and we believe that the cost given to Princess Parade has obscures a significant overall loss. The Council has not provided any justification for its figures, and this approach is disingenuous and not in the interests of open government. I would ask this committee to ask the District Council to release all the financial information that is not commercially sensitive so that the public can properly understand as to whether Princess Parade is viable. The council may think that by saying that Nichols Quarry is not viable, they're home and dry. They're not. 
The development of a leisure centre and housing on Prince's Parade is contrary to both government and the council's own policies. Additionally, the council has more than enough land for housing to meet the government's housing target, and therefore there is no overriding need to build houses on Prince's Parade, and there are no other material considerations to outweigh the policies. The development of Prince's Parade is contrary to government and the council's own policies and creates serious harm to the environment, the landscape and views, the setting of the ancient monument, and destroys the habit, habitat and ecology of the site and the canal, and it increases the flood risk. I would ask on behalf of St. Prince's Parade that you recommend to the council that this application is refused for the reasons I've set out. Thank you. Yeah. Martello Lakes 
and it means that it has a hope of arriving before the current one is not worth repairing. Second, the seafront amenity will be vastly enhanced. It is a no-brainer to prefer a wide, traffic-free promenade with trees, cafes and other facilities linked to parking that is not on the seafront, a whole new area for walking, playing, etc. At the moment, we have a desolate length of tarmac and concrete bordered by brambles with rows of parked cars and speed of traffic. Third, 40% of the current thorny, no-go wilderness will be transformed into a park, play area and green walkways linking to the parking. Um, <laughs> Yes. 
safety audit, which is not taken by capital traffic. And in terms of yeah, we can't hear you, sir. Please face this way. I face the mayor. I've, 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 that means, that, that, means that, yeah. that we can't hear a word you're saying, so why should we be here? Well, I can I, can I, let them, this is a council meeting. I have no contributions to the board, nor I'll ask the town side to be quiet and have a council with it. We can't have a word of that speech. We might as well say it again. Come on. No, I'm very happy sitting here because I'm trying to speak to the other people who aren't council members who are trying to ask the council to remove that gentleman, please. He's disrupting the council meeting. Thank you. We can't hear that. That's all right. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I promise not to make another word. Landscape and Ecological Management Plan. And the next one is on heritage. 
And this report covers the consultation, consensus responses to the issues raised by Heritage England and discloses the level of harm the proposed development poses on the whole site. It explains that the scheme is driven by leisure and recreation improvements for the entire district, with a key part of publicly accessible open space between the canal and the sea, and there is, <coughs> which there is not at the moment. And this, this, this report recovers the relationship between the canal bank and the site. This is the building of the houses and the leisure centre and concludes that additional harm caused by the development will be limited. This is the experts. <laughs> it also talks about the Broad Bridge and the Redoubt and the North Armour Canal. And that concludes this will not be affected by the development. The Shortcliffe Battery concludes that harm will be minimal. And Martello Towers number 8 and 9 concludes that harm will be minimal. Historic England state that, whilst we can accept that the overall level of harm would be less than substantial within the meaning of MPFF, we consider that the level of harm would be serious. They go on to state, there is no doubt that the road and the sea defences of Princess Parade, sorry, there is no doubt that if the road and sea defence of Princess Parade could not be constructed, and had the site level been raised, and had the recent buildings not been constructed at the east end of the canal, then historic England would not, the historic setting would not have a big impact. Within this context, there is no doubt that the current proposals would have seriously harmed the canal setting. No, Furthermore, historic England recognises. Considered for the leisure centre 
prior to settling on Finch's Parade as the preferred site. These alternatives include Nichols Quarry. The early state of development of Nichols Quarry option at the moment is 2022. The cost of delivering the site has been assessed by Betteridge and Wilson, and the report indicates a substantial differential between the current proposal of Princess Parade and an option to develop Vickers Quarry, the quarry site being much more expensive. This option is clearly not viable on that basis. The comparison between the cost and potential income associated with the scheme at both Princess Parade and Nichols Quarry demonstrate that about £2 million for Princess Parade and just under £16 million for Nichols Quarry. The financial appraisal by the consultants identifies that funding available and clearly demonstrates that the revenue for the residential and commercial development are a central part of the package for funding, funding the leisure centre. It is therefore obvious that the only site for the leisure centre is on Princess Parade, and if it is not be built here, it will not be built at all. The bottom line for this council here this evening is whether you are supportive of this development would have the advantageous effect of the well-being of the residents and the future, or whether you prefer to stop the development and let this town stagnate. <laughs> <laughs> I therefore recommend that you accept, you note these reports. Do I have a second one? Planning policy framework states 
Where there is evidence of deliberate neglect or damage to a heritage asset, <coughs> the deteriorated state of the heritage asset should not be taken into account in any decision. Yeah, yeah. And I think much has been made by lots of people saying it's a piece of land that nobody uses. Well, I think we all know that it's a piece of land that gives an inordinate amount of pleasure for many, many people in Hive. We can see that by the hundreds and hundreds of responses that the District Council has received, which have far outweighed anything that they have seen for many a year. And I would urge my fellow councillors to think about this, because it's all very well to say there's been development in Hive, and in the central parts of Hive there has, and we can't preserve things in aspect. But there are some parts which are totally iconic and are the most and the biggest attractions that bring people to this area. Having that open space, setting the scene, as I said, with the history of Hyde, is something we can never get back once it is lost.
has recommended further contamination tests and suggested that these could take place either now, prior to determination of this application, or via a condition if the scheme is approved. We as a council should push for these contamination tests to be undertaken prior to determination to ensure that the public is reassured and that all costs related to remediation are known in advance of committing further funds. At the last vote, I supported the Leisure Centre at Prince's Parade, but not the housing on this site, because um, on this site. But my opinion is shaped by engagement with residents and taking into account all the new information that becomes available. We should each be prepared to change our mind, free of burdens to others, and I have been convinced by the arguments that the development will do substantial harm, and that harm is not justified by the supposed public benefits. To summarise, we must not ignore the view of residents, or indeed the statutory consultees whose opinions are no doubt educated and genuine. We must change our position on the application, and we must oppose it. Um, Councillor Luke Jones has, has made a proposal that's been seconded, that we note these reports. Um, sadly, councillors, I don't think noting these reports is good enough. There are some serious points in, in these reports that we have to consider, and they should shape our position. Noting them doesn't go far enough. Thank you.
we've, we've had huge amounts of documents on this, and my colleague, Ashley Cambridge, has given some very good viewpoints. So I will also defer from making a decision until we get the full facts. We do need to know what's in the ground. We do need to see the full environmental impact. And we do need full disclosure on finance. We can't run anything without that. So I do thank the public for those two points. It is a very valid point, and that's my position. Thank you. With great respect to all who have spoken here this evening, I believe that it's in the interest of the silent majority of the public, of people of Hyde, the community of Hyde, that the Hyde Town Council support the development of the Princess Parade. I believe it be for the good of the community. I think we have to be very careful of being barracked into being prevented from moving forward on this commission. <laughs>
instructions and those in favour on the planning website. And the objections are really well thought through. And there's over 700. And it has really made me think and consider. And I believe that as a councillor, I should read all that, read what everyone says. And that's how I can have an open mind because I'm here to, to listen to all, to, to all the people that um, have responded. Does any other council wish to speak on this? Councilor, you have a council? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, common sense dictates that should the conditions be right and all the objections resolved, the obvious position for the swimming pool and leisure centre beyond Princess Parade will be accessible to all. I hope that the details mentioned and explained have allayed the fears of those who are labouring under the false information put forward by all those who are dead against any sort of development or building anywhere near or around Hyde. These people would prefer to keep Hyde in Aspic so long as Hyde remains like it was when they were young. They say, our green space. We always enjoyed our green space. And the views to the sea. Well, I do not agree, and I will not allow the disgusting mess that is adjacent to Prince Spray, that the land adjacent to Prince Spray, to be a monument to those people. I would much rather the land on Prince Spray with a swimming pool and leisure centre be a monument to the generation of our children and of their children. We will not live forever and enjoy the area as it is forever. Yeah. It is our duty to make sure that one of the most important events to be decided by this council for the last hundred years be beneficial to the whole population of Hyde. I would hate for the future generations to say that our parents were narrow-minded, selfish, Lincoln <laughs> and lack moral fiber. <laughs> and allow such a possibility of obtaining something worthwhile for their use and enjoyment around Hyde to slip through their fingers. That is why, Mr. Mayor, I am nailing my colours to the mast and boasting that the development to be built on Christmas Parade is to import for Hyde is a must and fire. statement, the affordable houses will be exactly as required. And that 
to tell you that I am, as the Cabinet Member for Housing, mm. I have a sum of money available specifically for affordable houses earmarked for Princess Parade. And that's come from 106 monies from other developments around here. So, it's a myth to think there's, there's going to be no affordable houses. Housing. So, as I said earlier on, if you want a swimming pool and you want a leisure centre, you're going to have to have it on the Princess Parade. And we, are asked tonight, we have been asked tonight to look at the reports, which we have done, and my recommendation is that we note these reports. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. We have a composer and a seconder on Councillor Mayor James' motion. All those in favour, please show. Um, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Can I have some clarification? Because Councillor Mayor James was a substantive motion. Mine was the amendment. And according to standing orders, the amendment should be voted on first. If the amendment falls, you then vote on the substantive motion. <laughs> Pick up. 
Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would like to then further propose that until a full and financial disclosure is... is um, gosh, I need my glasses, sorry. I said it once and I'll try and say it before again. Um, is disclosed. Hive Town Council reserves its right to rescind its previous decision of support. Can uh, the proposer make quite clear as to what she means by full financial information? Well, I can only do it by memory because, as I said earlier, I have unfortunately left my papers at home, but you have heard this evening from several other speakers that there has not been a full financial disclosure. Yes, uh, yeah, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, uh, the reason I ask, of course, is because I, during my speech I did actually ask about yeah. increased full, uh, financial information being made available. But it's one thing, it's a question of definition of what is full financial information. Some more financial information <laughs> may be okay, but where do you start with full financial information? Councillor Hanson. Thank you, Chairman. It might help to quote from the list of original reports that we've been discussing, some additional reports to think on. Um, the, the report which has been withheld uh, from, from the public access system is Appendix 3, the Viability Cost Appraisal Report. Um, and, uh, perhaps the uh, move of the motion means that uh, this council is in, uh, it's requesting to receive that document, perhaps even on a confidential basis.
extension. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Real quick,